Hello, I need to do a video on the macro roundup. By the way, I need to stop drinking this Kentucky crack water. It's uh, making me fat. No, it is not alcoholic, it is a soda. Um, it's uh, loaded with caffeine. Yeah, it's totally relevant photography, I know. <laughs> So somebody, somebody actually emailed. This has happened twice. I'm really tired in some of these videos. So somebody emailed me yesterday and said, "He's dead serious." He said, "When did you, uh, when did you uh, graduate from Alcoholics Anonymous?" Or he said something like, "When's the last time you stopped drinking?" And he said, "I'm sorry if this is an offensive question, but he said I just wanted to know because I, as I, look, I don't drink at all. I mean, I haven't been drunk for 20 years since I was in college." No. <laughs> so, apparently some of these videos I sound so tired that people actually think I'm drunk or something. My brain is all I have left, okay? I'm not interested in ruining it on alcohol. Um, I need to do a macro roundup here because a lot of people, I've, I noticed that I need videos to like fill in gaps. And the reason being is that I keep getting the same question over and over again about specific things that seem unclear. I made a video about the best lenses to pack around, and one of them was the uh, the all fabulous, uh, super sexy silk sex and sugar uh, uh, Nikkor 60 millimeter 2.8 D series. Um, and uh, they were talking about, well, you know, your top lens recommendation for macro and also for portraiture, and I have one, and I love it, and uh, you know, hundreds of you folks have one. It's a Tekina 100 millimeter 2.8 macro, great for portraiture and great for uh, macro. Uh, one to one reproduction ratio, same on the uh, 60 millimeter. Now it's only one to two on the 55 millimeter. Now, respectively, let's talk about the four of these and what I was making the recommendation on. In macro, every millimeter counts because there's nothing worse than trying to shoot a subject and you got to shove the lens right up its ass. Um, there was a girl who was asking about doing makeup tutorials. Her lens broke and uh, she was wanting to do a lot of close-up stuff and she wanted a great normal lens for her DX camera and actually the best recommendation for her, for example, you know, the right tool for the right job. The best lens for her unquestionably was the 40 millimeter macro. Now 40 millimeters is way too short. I don't have a 40 millimeter here by the way. 40 millimeters is way too short for doing macro work, but for what she wanted for doing close up, she wanted a normal lens basically that could do a lot of close up stuff where she does self instruction on makeup tutorial. That's the perfect choice for her. Now, the reason I made the recommendation for traveling lenses, and I say I'm limited on what I can pack, as I've said before, like the 60 millimeter and macro is a um, perfect Swiss Army knife tool of a lens. I mean, it does so much. It's a perfect normal, it's a perfect portrait lens on a DX camera. Yeah, it's the best reproduction uh, camera, uh, best reproduction lens. Uh, it's great for macro work. Is 60 millimeters a hair too short? Well, if you plan on a lot of macro work, yeah, unquestionably it is because you have issues where you need a bracket for flash or you need an off uh, camera cable for uh, illumination of your subject. But I mean, it's just an incredible lens. Uh, but the reason I'd recommended it over the 100 millimeter in that instance was that. Unless I know I'm doing, I don't go anywhere without a macro lens. I mean, if I might take a trip or do something. But if you're on a limited trip with limited size and whatnot, and you got a DX camera, say I only take two or three lenses, the 60 millimeter would be one of them. And the 100 millimeter is larger, so I was making the recommendation of that 60 millimeter versus the wonderful Takina. Obviously, as I said, every millimeter counts. So obviously, if you're doing a bunch of macro work, I mean, I've got. This is uh, one of two lenses that I have, the Takina Martin one. This one's got 55 plus thousand shots on it. It looks just as good as brand new. It's just an incredible tank. I absolutely love the uh, autofocus, the manual ring, and it's just so huge. Um, but that was the reason that I was recommending it over the Takina in that specific instance where size and weight and whatnot. You know, obviously this lens does a lot more than the Takina. The Takina is a perfect macro and an awesome portrait. This lens is a perfect normal, it's a perfect reproduction lens, it's a perfect portrait lens for DX, and it's a very good but not perfect macro lens. Why is it not perfect? Because it's 60 millimeters. It means instead of being like this with the Takina, I'm like this with the 60 millimeter. And that creates issues with obviously illumination and casting shadow. You obviously can't use a pop-up flash. Now, respectively, we're talking $380. You can get in gray market cheaper for about $330 on the Tequina. 
uh, and uh, two hundred dollars minty used all day long on the sixty millimeter and uh, one to two reproduction rate however it's all manual focus but this is the toughest lens Nikon ever made she's a little beast you can grab these all day long for sixty bucks in minty shape perfect normal lens built like a tank like I said you could toss it down the street not that I recommend that and it would still survive at the end even though it might be ugly um, but sixty bucks I mean just incredible now do I recommend that over the 60 millimeter? No, but if you happen to find one, I'd say get it because it's an awesome lens. It doesn't have a one-to-one -one reproduction rate, but there you go. Um, does not a, a better lens, has a flatter image, however, the Sigma 150mm APO macro with uh, optical stabilization, the same thing as vibration reduction, absolutely love it. However, it is an $1,100 lens. The great thing about this is I can do handheld shots and I can actually get away from my subject, like if you're shooting insects, critters, whatnot. You know, there's nothing will scare away your subject faster than having to shove the lens right up the ass of the subject that you're shooting. So, having distance in macro is incredibly important. Now, that doesn't qualify for all macro, so it's better for obviously wildlife and nature. And uh, where you want to use natural illumination. If someone's like shooting wa watches or pins or little, you know, uh, diamond jewelry or whatnot, size doesn't necessarily matter. They have a perfect studio built up for lighting. They got their own light box and they have their things set just the way they want, like I would have here on my tabletop. And they're not worried about getting very close with their lens to their subject because they've got perfect lighting, everything's controlled indoors. So, what would I say the Sigma is more appropriate for, even though it is $1,100? Well, $1,200. Well, tell me where you get it from, $1,100 to $1,200. The fact that it has optical stabilization, that I don't have to worry about uh, some of the lower light shots, uh, them being fuzzy, I get some distance between my, me and my subject. I'm able to employ natural lighting. I'm going to use natural lighting as much as possible. I mean, fill flash is obviously good. If I got a, uh, an insect underneath a, a tree and it's dark, I still need to use a flash. But I can actually use a pop, not that I'm ever a fan really of a pop up flash, but on the go. Um, you know, just happen to be doing some macro shots out in the field or I take a trip in the woods or something. It's great that I can, not that I'm any advocate of it because then there's nothing worse than, uh, not necessarily the case, but pretty much there's nothing worse than a direct, you know, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, nothing worse than direct light off your pop-up flash on your subject. I mean, that's just, that's just murder as far as when it comes to any sort of advanced amateur professional photography. It's all about flash angle replicating uh, you know the perfect lighting conditions giving definition to your, your subject um, but to me this lens is worth eleven hundred dollars because it has a spectrum of use that these other lenses don't have and the tequila comes close to it but it doesn't have optical stabilization and I have to get closer to my subject everything in macro as far as millimeter focal length counts now it doesn't count necessarily so much if you're doing tabletop shots of wedding rings watches little dinky stuff in your house and uh, or, you know you, you set up an orchid or you brought some flowers in from outside who cares you know you got perfect you got your tripod set up you got your light set up you know who cares you don't have to get that close however getting distance is still helpful in those instances especially if it's a larger macro shot like you're taking a shot of a group of flowers and you just want to focus in on one little part of one flower you're actually able to get some distance so it is helpful there as well however flatter image production than on the wonderful Tequina which of course is just awesome so I needed to make this video to qualify a different macro lenses obviously there are other macro lenses now so far as the uh, lens everybody keeps asking about the 105 millimeter uh, macro uh, Nikkor, which is basically a thousand dollars. I cannot recommend it. It is a cheap plastic construction. The image quality is nowhere near as good as the Tequila 100 millimeter. I have owned two of them, of which I bought the second merely to resell it because I got it so cheap from a desperate photographer who needed the cash really bad. But I cannot recommend that lens. It is a worst value for what it is. Uh, Nikon is extremely proud of their macro lenses, and they're not that well built most of them not all of them they're not that well built and they're heinously overpriced here's one exception however I never buy a new one and the price on a new one is rather expensive and that is this is actually the pre D version not there's really any difference this is the 60 millimeter D f2.8 micro Nikkor micro is just uh, Nikon's name for macro so anyway I just had to clarify a few things because obviously you have special shooting circumstances and conditions where one is more appropriate or less appropriate than the other size being in consideration, 
Um, focal length being considerations, you're not cramming the uh, lens up the ass of your subject. Uh, optical stabilization for shooting macro on the fly. I'm going to do a bunch of macro shots out in the field. I don't want to have a big flash bracket. I have to pack with me. I got perfect ambient, either morning or evening light. Obviously, noonday light is a killer. There's nothing that uh, kind of sucks worse than noonday light. Not that you can't take beautiful shots of noonday light or midday light, but you know this lens has its spectrum where it shines. This lens has its spectrum where it shines, and so does the Tikina. And uh, in so knowing, you can make the right choice and make a, a purchase that you don't regret later because you know the spectrum of what it is either is that you want to do or that you plan to do, and therefore you're both not wasting your money and time, and that is the whole purpose of what I'm trying to do here. And I hope I clarified some things up for you in that regard. And uh, another video from the uh, crazy, angry, uh, tattooed freak photographer, and uh, let me know what you think, and ask me any questions, and... Uh, as it is right now, I'm spending 65% of the day or more actually answering questions, although I'm happy to do that. I'm kind of stretched pretty, <laughs> kind of stretched pretty thin on the question answering front there. Um, but, you know, I'm glad to do it. So thank you all, and uh, Nikon Focus will be up within the next 48 hours. But like I said, it has to be built brick by brick. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, so it's not like the website is automatically going to go poof and everything in the world's going to be there. Websites don't work that way unless you'd created them long ahead of time, which I had not. I'd only decided to do this, you know, after much consideration a few days ago, so the website, like a house, is going to have to be built brick by brick, but just uh, please understand that and bear with me in the process and uh, see the prior video so far as what I talked about as far as you being able to contribute to the site and, uh, you know, make your own articles and contribute and actually gain you know, profit from the site if you want. Not that you should write articles for profit, but you know, you could be put your own PayPal link at the top there. Anyway, I'll catch you.